In this video, I'll explain how to calculate impermanent loss in a constant product AMM. We'll say that IL of D is equal to the percentage loss of LP given a price movement of D. So for example, let's say that the price changes from P0 to P1, then we'll write P1 equal to P0 multiplied by some factor D where D is greater than zero. When the price moves by D, we can calculate the impermanent loss to be two times the square root of D over 1 plus d minus 1. And here we're assuming that the trading fee is equal to 0. And the graph will look something like this. If the price does not change at all, then d is equal to 1, and there is no loss in providing liquidity to a constant product AMM. However, if the price changes either down or up, then the LP will experience some loss. For example, let's say the price of ETH goes to 0, then your loss will be minus 1, or 100%. On the other hand, even if the price of ETH goes up, then you'll still lose money providing liquidity to a constant product AMM. Okay, so for the rest of the video, I'll explain how to derive this equation. So, we'll say that we have two tokens, token next. For example, let's say token next is ETH, and we have token Y. And for this example, we'll say that token Y is something like a stablecoin, like DAI. We'll say that lowercase x is equal to amount of ETH in the AMM, in the pool. And likewise, lowercase y is equal to the amount of DAI in the pool. We also say that capital P is equal to the price of token X in terms of token Y. In our case, token X is ETH and token Y is DAI. So for this example, this will be the price of ETH in terms of DAI. And we'll define this to be the amount of DAI in the pool over the amount of ETH in the pool. So let me give you an example. For example, we'll say that there are 10,000 DAI in the pool, and we'll say that there are 100 ETH in the pool. So P will be equal to Y over X. Y is the amount of DAI in the pool, and X is the amount of ETH in the pool. So this will be equal to, we can simplify this ratio by removing the two zeros, and we get that this ratio is equal to 100 DAI for one ETH. So when there are 10,000 DAIs and 100 ETH in the AMM, then P, the price of ETH in terms of DAI, is 100 DAI per ETH. One ETH costs 100 DAI. So that is an example of P. Okay, let's move on and I'll define a little bit more variables. So we'll say X times Y is equal to L raised to the power of two. Now, inside the constant product AMM, what you're used to seeing is x times y equals k. Here, we're replacing k with L squared. So next, I want to define what x and y are equal to in terms of L and P. So what we're going to use, we're going to use this equation, and we're also going to use this equation to derive what is y equal to and what is x equal to in terms of L and in terms of P. So let's find out. Let's start with y. Using this equation, we can write y as y is equal to L squared over x. I'm just bringing the x in this equation to the right by dividing both sides of the equation by x. So y is equal to L squared over x. Next, I'll define x in terms of p and y from using this equation. So I'll copy this equation and then bring it over here. Multiply both sides of the equation by x and I get x here and this x cancels out. And then next, I'll divide both sides of the equation by p. So from the left, I'll remove the p, and to the right, I'll divide this expression by p. So from the equation above, we get that x is equal to y divided by p. Next, let's put this x back inside this equation above. So this will be equal to l square over y over p. We can rewrite this as l square over p times p. Now notice that we have a y over here and a y over here. So we can write this whole equation as y square is equal to l square over p. Now we can take the square root of both sides and we'll come to the conclusion that y is equal to square root of l square is l and square root of p is the square root of p. 
So we wrote y in terms of l and p, and y is equal to l times the square root of p. So I'll write this down as an answer to y is equal to l times the square root of p. Next, let's do the same thing to find what x is equal to in terms of l and p. Okay, so what is x equal to? Again, we'll use these two equations to derive x in terms of l and p. So we'll start with this equation over here. I'll copy it paste it here. Let's rewrite x. So divide both sides of the equation by y and we get x is equal to l square over y. Okay next we'll replace y by using this equation. So I'll copy this equation again and then paste it here. So p is equal to y over x. So y will be equal to multiply both sides of the equation by x and we get that y is equal to p times x. Okay so let's put this equation back inside here. So this will be equal to L square over P times X. Similar to how we derived Y, we have an X over here and we also have a X over here. So we can rewrite this whole equation as X square is equal to L square over P. From this equation, I multiply by X. So I get the X square and cancel out this X square and we're left with X square is equal to L square divided by P. And now we can know what x is in terms of l and p by taking the square root on both sides of the equation. We get x is equal to square root of l square is l over the square root of p. And that answers our question what is x equal to in terms of l and p. Well x is equal to l divided by the square root of p. So I'll copy this answer and then I'll paste it here. Okay, so we now solved what y and x are equal to in terms of l and p. So we're now ready to solve this equation i l of d. I'll scroll down. i l of d, this is equal to the percentage of impermanent loss if the price moves by some amount d. So this will be equal to loss from lp over the value of tokens if you did not put them inside the AMM. Just holding on to the tokens. Huddle. And this will be equal to Let's say that the value of tokens inside the AMM after some time, let's say t equals 1, will be equal to b of 1. And if you hold the token, then the value will be b of huddle. To calculate the loss from LP, we'll just have to subtract these two amounts. And to calculate this ratio, we'll just divide this by b of huddle. Next, let's find what these terms are in terms of L and P. Again, we'll say that V of 1 is equal to the value of tokens in the pool after some time. Let's say T equals 1. On the other hand, we have B of huddle. This is the value of tokens if you did not provide liquidity to the pool. The value of tokens if you just held on to your tokens. Let's find out what each of these values are in terms of token Y. So b of 1 is equal to, we'll say that the amount of token y that we can withdraw at t equals 1 will be y of 1. And the amount of token x that we can withdraw at t equals 1 is x of 1. Now to find b1 in terms of token y, we'll need to first multiply x by some price at t equals 1. So I'll say p of 1. And again, remember that p is equal to the price of x in terms of y. So when we multiply p times x, then we get an amount of tokens in terms of y. So I'll scroll down. So that is why we're multiplying x by p of 1 over here. Before we move on, I'll define what p of 0 and p of 1 are. Let's say that at some time t equals 0, we provided a liquidity of token x for x0 and for token y, y0 amount of token y. Then by definition, the price of token x in terms of y at t equals 0, p of 0, is equal to x of 0 over y of 0. Likewise, at some time t equals 1, we'll have some amount of token x, x1, and some amount of token y, y1. And taking x1 over y1, we get the price p1. Okay, now going back to our equation, b1 is equal to the value of tokens in the pool at t equals 1 is equal to y1. If we were to withdraw at this moment, we have y1 amount of token y and x1 amount of token x. And then we multiply this by p1 to get x1 in terms of y. We add these two together and we get v1, the value of tokens in the pool at t equals 1. Back at top, we defined what y and x are in terms of l and p. So let's do that over here. So y1 is equal to y1 is equal to l times the square root of p. 
So y1 is equal to L times the square root of P at t equals 1, so at P1 plus Let's replace x1 with the equations that we found out above. So x is equal to L over square root of P. So L over square root of P, P at times equal 1. So P of 1. And then we multiply this by P of 1. P of 1 divided by the square root of P of 1, we can cancel them out. And this expression will be equal to the square root of P1. So we have L times square root of P1 plus the L that we get from here. And the P1 over square root of P1 cancels out to be square root of P1. So we have L times the square root of P1 plus L times square root of P1. And this is simply equal to 2 times L times square root of P1. Now when the price changes from P0 to P1, we can write P1 in terms of P0 by simply saying P1 is equal to P0 times some number D. And this D is the same as the D that you see over here. You multiply P0 by some amount D and we get P1. And now we can replace this equation as saying this is equal to 2L times the square root of P0 times some d. And finally, B1 is equal to 2 times L times the square root of P0 times d. Okay, next, let's find B of huddle. This will be the value of tokens in terms of token Y if we kept it outside of the AMM, if we just held on to the tokens. B of huddle is equal to the amount of token Y that we'll have if we just hold on to the token will be Y of 0. At t equals 0, we put in y0 amount of token y, but if we held on to it, then we would still have y0 amount of token y. How about token x? If we did not put it into AMM, how much token x will we still have? Well, we will have x sub 0 amount of token x. Now we need to multiply this number so that we get a number in terms of token y. The price of token x in terms of token y at t equals 1 is p of 1. We add these two values up and we get b of huddle. Okay, next, let's simplify this equation replacing all of these variable by l and p. y at zero, well, it is equal to, y is equal to l times the square root of p. So I'll copy this, paste it here. At t equals zero, the price would have been p of zero, plus, this is equal to, plus x zero in terms of l and p r. I'll copy this again and then paste it here. L over the square root of P, the price at T0 is P of 0 times P of 1. We said that P of 1 is equal to P of 0 times D. So we can replace this P of 1 with P of 0 times D. I'm replacing P of 1 with P of 0 times D. So this will be equal to L times the square root of P of 0 plus L over the square root of P0 times P0 times D. I'm replacing P1 with P0 times D since we defined over here that P1 is equal to P0 times D. Okay, we have a P0 on top and a square root of P0 on the bottom. So we can cancel these two out. And on the top, we're left with the square root of P0. So we have L times the square root of P0 plus L that we see over here times the square root of p0 times d. So we now know what b1 and b huddle are. So we're now ready to solve this equation, b1 minus b huddle over b huddle. So I'll copy this, scroll down, then paste it here. I'll also highlight what b huddle is. b huddle is equal to l times the square root of p0 plus l times the square root of p0 multiplied by d. So Let's now find what this equation is equal to in terms of b1 and b huddle. This is equal to b1 is equal to this expression over here. And then next we have a minus and b huddle is equal to this over here. Paste it. This is over b huddle. So it will be this expression again and then paste it. Okay, let's simplify this equation. In all of these terms, I see a L and a square root of P0, so let's cancel them out. I'll cancel the L and the square root of P0, L and the square root of P0, and do the same for the top as well. L, square root of P0, 
L square root P0 and L square root P0. Okay, let's clean up the equation. So, so the top we'll have 2 times the square root of D minus 1. I forgot to put a parenthesis over here. So I'll put a parenthesis after the minus. Minus 1 plus D. And this will be over. For the first term, we cancel all of the terms. So that will be, we're left with 1 plus the second term we cancelled almost everything but we still have a d so the bottom will be d and we can simplify this equation to say this is equal to 2 times the square root of d over 1 plus d minus 1 plus d over 1 plus d is equal to minus 1 and there we go we have come to the conclusion that the impermanent loss is equal to this equation 2 times the square root of d over 1 plus d minus 1